Welcome everyone, my name is Patricia Rozvora and I'm the host of Kitchen Conversations, a platform to speak about contemporary art from so-called Eastern Europe. In each episode, you're going to be introduced to one artist, sometimes also a collective, whose visual or activist practice sheds light onto the complex former socialist region, with all its histories, cultures, languages, foods, but also traumas and their inevitable contemporary consequences. The podcast is a fully independent platform existing since May 2020. If you enjoy the monthly conversations, you can support me via Patreon or share the episodes with your friends or via social channels. Welcome to another episode of the Kitchen Conversations podcast. Happy to have some of the regular listeners tuning back in and also excited to share the platform with some of the newcomers. Today's episode was recorded live in Amsterdam, my old home and the new home of my today's guest, film director, screenwriter and editor, Vladlena Sandu. Her place of origin is a complicated matter. She was born in the 80s in Crimea, Ukraine, still under the Soviet occupation. In the 90s, she has moved to Chechnya Grozny, the city of her mother's family. Six years into the Chechen war, her mother and grandmother decided to seek refuge in Russia. After living and studying there for years, in February 2022, after Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Vladlina understood she can no longer stay in Moscow packed her bags and arrived in Amsterdam. Her autobiographical films work through the traumatic experiences of living through the Chechen war and later living in a country that doesn't acknowledge those histories. I thought in light of the current war in Ukraine, it's important to also speak about the history of Chechnya as it was one of the first acts of modern colonialism by the Russian Federation. Welcome, Vladlena, to Kitchen Conversations. Thank you, Patricia, for you invite me. I hope we have a very freedom kitchen conversation uh, because the people don't have a chance to translate his mind outside kitchen in the Soviet Union. They only speak of freedom inside the kitchen. In the kitchen conversation, this is a good joke. And I uh, think this is maybe the big problem of what happened now, because people not started talk about the freedom, about the liberty. Democratics, demo- right? Yes. They only said freedom in the kitchen. In the house, but not outside, yes. not on the streets. And I uh, think uh, your kitchen conversation had a uh, different perspective because you translate your kitchen conversation in your uh, in the internet, in podcast, and this is... Uh, interesting um... yeah it's supposed to go outside of the kitchen indeed yeah yeah i mean we i always meet in very like safe spaces but then of course it goes online so yeah that's so nice that you thought about it <laughs> it's a nice way uh, to start how are you feeling in amsterdam you're now one year here yes i'm started leave uh, in amsterdam middle of march 2022 I feel safe and I very love Amsterdam. First time I did been in Amsterdam in 2018. Mm-hmm. Uh, my film Holy God selected uh, the Rotterdam Film Festival. We're going to speak about it. Yes. <laughs> yes. And um, very interesting emotion I did feel here. Very safe, safe, safe. I did been in more uh, uh, city in Europe and the country, and the Amsterdam give me very uh, safe energy. That's so so good, and I'm happy you found also a place to live. Right? You said you lived like in eight different places. We just spoke about it uh, before starting to record, and now you have a nice uh, working studio where you also yeah live and work. Yes, and I live in Wow. Yes. And this is very interesting images um, because 
Sometimes in the night time, near Wow, come the big bus, the title European Tourist. And from this big bus uh, come to um, Wow more refugees from Ukraine. And this is in, uh, I, uh, quite an I irony, had idea right? about the script. Uh, wow. Because uh, in this place, uh, two floor leaves refugees from uh, Ukraine and two floor re- leave artists people. Artists, right. Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, so that, of course, adds to the whole context of your work as well. And uh, your uh, film work, your artistic work is very much connected also to your identity which is, uh, I would say, a bit more complicated maybe f- than for uh, some average person. When I ask you where you're from, it's quite difficult to, to answer. If you could like tell to, to the listeners if they would have to now get to know you, what is your story, let's say, in terms of identity that you also work through in your art practice? Yes, and this is a diff- real difficult question for me because homeland of my father, Ukraine, and uh, homeland of my mother, Chechenia. And I was born in Ukraine, Crimea. And um, I was uh, six years old. Uh, I moved to homeland of my mother, Chechenian Republic, in the Grozny city. Identity, uh, I don't know my identity because my uh, family name Sandu Mm -hmm. and this is originally a family name from Moldova and Romania. Oh really? And now the uh, premier minister of Moldova, uh, Maya Sandu. Oh really? I didn't know that. uh, And um, my uh, grandpa from Moldova. Think this is the very uh, little city Saroki, and the Saroki live the uh, more gypsy and Jewish people. I think the my grandpa had the Jewish blood. Yes, and my m- grandma, uh, she's the originally Karaims. You know the Karaims. This is Crimean Tatar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And my ma had uh, some blood from Hakasia. And from the Caucasus uh, Cossacks. Oh wow! Wonderful, I don't know who colorful. I am. Uh, yes, history of uh, blood history. Yes. And um, both my homeland are occupied Russian regime now. I'm originally speaking Russian language, and uh, I don't know who I am. <laughs> I escape from Russia and uh, I don't uh, have a chance to return because I understand my perspective inside Russia. Can you tell a little bit about that? Maybe it's a very simple question, but also very complicated. Like, why did you decide or were forced to uh, leave Russia last year in March 2022? Why was that your decision? Or I'm not sure if it was your decision, but like, what forced you or what was like, I have to leave now? I... The first time I didn't believe for this news, I'm shocked because I didn't use news every day uh, because the news destroyed my mind and I need the concentration for my work and I did finalize my big project, a serious identification and for this time I am created the little poster I want to peace and did go to the Pushkin Square in the center of Moscow and I didn't see more people and uh, I'm see more police guy and I'm 
uh, walked to the Tverskaya street with this poster. And the police guy take it me and ask what do you do? I'm <laughs> I'm said oh, <laughs> you know uh, now we have news about the Russian against Ukraine and created war. Said yes I have a chance for the piquet. This is my position. I don't understand this moment. And they, oh, you don't stay for this. You go for the Tverskaya Street. And this is not piquet. This is demonstration. And mm. this is big problem Illegal. for you. you can't. Mm. And they take me. And after they check my documents and read it. Uh, oh, you originally from Ukraine? Started asking me more questions and want to put me to the police car. I'm um, ask them why you take me. I uh, my poster translate. I want to peace, and they oh, it's very strange. You from Ukraine. <laughs> You born in Ukraine. That's so scary. Uh, and uh, I'm understand more. I'm understand what happened. I'm understand. I'm don't see more people. I understand. Uh, I think more people inside Russia has a fear. More people support the Putin's regime. And I understand. I don't have a chance um, change this. I understand. I'm at a perspective only go to the prison, uh, created suicide, or uh, and this is my perspective in Leave, Russia. right? Yes. Yeah. And I'm ask myself, what do I want? I want. Great, will create my new life and uh, produce fim films about this and analyze what happened and uh, translate will translate my experience of life. And that would not be possible inside yes, Russia. Yes, absolutely not to, po to be possible because I know the film industry now has a list uh, from the official propaganda about the topics, the topics the cinematographers they can have work the with. chance to produce now. Yes, and. Um, I uh, didn't believe for the chance of translate uh, uh, true inside Russia. This is impossible. So as you said, you were uh, born in Crimea and then you uh, moved to your mom's um, homeland. Of course, uh, we all know uh, there was a long war happening uh, because of Russia's regime. And uh, when we were speaking before the recording, I was asking you about that history, about the war. And then I said, like, I mentioned two wars and you corrected me that you think it should be spoken as one war that lasted 10 years or maybe more. Can you tell a little bit about that? Why do you think we should speak about one uh, yes, such uh, one war? Yeah, this is the true. I think this is the one war. What is it? War. War destroyed the normal life. And inside Shenia had a little pause and uh, for the war and <laughs> the real life inside the Chechenia it's destroyed. It didn't go on right. Yes. It's, it wasn't like yeah. The people uh, don't have a, a normal life. Yes, and the, now the people from Ukraine say it, 
No, the war started not in the 2022. The war started uh, in 2014. 14. And this is the true. Yes, I think this is true. Russian regime against the war uh, for the Ukraine in uh, 2014. The problem of the this world not understand what is it. And now yeah, I guess because in the West we only hear about like this escalation of events when they reach Europe, you know, and yeah. indeed the same happened uh, in case of Ukraine that only now we kind of acknowledge it here as a full scale war. Uh, and it's all about uh, yeah understanding the yes. complexities of that history. Uh, why the important 2022 and the 24 March on oh, February? Yes, because in this date, all world and uh, more people inside Russia and more people inside Ukraine understand what happened, the real, and recognize yes, this is the war, and this is not the date of the start whole war yes uh, this is the date of the understanding what happened the real mm. yeah and of course i think now since the west the big west uh, acknowledged actually the situation uh the russia's regime ongoing regime going on for uh yeah hundred of years <laughs> Uh, and I think also now we finally also speak about other wars, uh, the Chechen war, the war in Syria and so on. And kind of finally being like, oh, actually it's all similar. There are similarities. Uh, and I think that's why it was important for me to have you also on the podcast to kind of, uh, yeah, understand the bigger Uh, political um, strategies of yeah Russian regime yes indeed inside the Chechenia this is the first colonial war by a modern Russian federation and this is the big myth about the Russian's democracy Yeltsin did come to the president of the Russian federation and the first time he started the two very important point started process of the occupation of war inside Chechnya and he started the share for the modern oligarchs the nationality resource to Russia and this is not democratic process this is the absolutely imperialistic Process. And uh, more people inside the Russia and from this world want to believe about the democracy and uh, want to believe, oh, maybe <laughs> Soviet Union it's uh, finalized and maybe this In is the past, uh, yeah. uh, past of the new democracy ideas. And this is not true, uh, mm -hmm. because after I'm escaped from Chechnya and I'm refugees inside the Russia, I remember how many people inside the Russia not understand what happened inside the Chechnya. They have the only propagandist position. Oh, inside the Chechnya live the terrorists. Already the yes, in the nineties. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and uh, about the oh, you from Chechnya, you uh, come to Chechnya and live in Chechnya. This is very nationalistic. You, sh ideas. you should go back to your country. Yes, from the uh, yes, in the Russians, in the Central Russia, uh, Moscow, more people not understand what happened inside the Chechnya. They're very important. The Russian Federation didn't recognize the Chechenian war. This is special military operation. This is first special military operation. Sounds familiar, right? Yeah. 
And now we understand what is it, uh, special military operation by Russian Federation. I would also like to speak about your art and your films, since uh, yeah, the idea is also to speak about politics, but through art. And you do so many great works where you speak about all those complex issues through visual language. Maybe we can say something about your uh, work, Holy God, that was your graduation piece uh, that you uh, premiered or finalized in 2016. Uh, but then, of course, you still uh, lived and studied in Moscow. So I'm curious, how was it possible for you to make a film that is uh, personal, but also very political about all those topics we were just speaking about? Uh, yeah, how, how was it possible for you to fund such a film and to show it? This is a short documentary uh, about my experience uh, life after the Chechen war inside the Russia. And uh, I'm talk about this in this film, about my real experience, about my PTSD, about the problem my and my family after war. Uh, before 2016, uh, I didn't talk about the uh, Chechen war because the more people inside the Russia don't recognize this war. And they, oh, Chechenian war, this is not war. This is not war. This is action about the killing terrorists. To protect yes. the democracy or yes. the Russian citizens. Or? Yes. I finalize my uh, education in cinematography and understand Now I understand what is it cinematography and I want to produce a film about my real story. And uh, my grandma sick and I know has a little time for the life. And I very love her and my documentary Our Loves from the second uh, course in university about her. All right. I very lo uh, love it here and I understand I want to talk about the war experience with my grandma. On film before yes. her passing. Yes. And we started to talk about this topic with my grandma and uh, ask it here about the memories in the war time. And my grandma said to me, no, no, no need to talk about this. We need to talk about another topics. Good things. I'm, I'm asking her, why? Why you don't recognize? And I remember uh, we don't talk about this inside my family. Film introduced this dialogue with my grandma. How she don't want to talk about this because she had afraid talk about this. She had the fear inside her because Russia don't recognize this war. And uh, m more people used the escape from Chechnya and started live in Russia as a PTSD and as a more mistakes inside the mind because we know <laughs> this is the war and Russian brainwash <laughs> Uh, patriotic uh, ideology uh, killed this history and said, no, no, this is not war. And uh, this is big mistake inside mine. Yeah, some unprocessed trauma, yeah. right? Yes, and this is much m more process of trauma. So it starts with a monologue of you speaking uh, also about your mom that passed as well. And then we see you with the grandma. Uh, it, it could be seen as a portrait of your family, yet it is, of course, very, very political film, which I love that it wasn't so explicit, you know, the, the, the politics and like the, the history was so like delicately put inside your personal story, because I think every individual story tells the history of the Chechen war. Coming back to that, how, how was it possible for you to, to, to make this film? Yes, this is the interesting story because in 2014, Russian Federation and Minister of Culture created 
censorship in the cinematography. More films uh, with the producer inside the Russian Federation need to take papers from the Minister of Culture. The paper uh, gives the chance after show your film inside the Russian. Mm, I think this is the parallel process about the uh, Russian started the war in Donbass in Ukraine and uh, started process for the occupation Crimea. It was and all we want to uh, control the uh, all cultural sector yes. as well. And uh, they uh, checked my film Holocaust and uh, said to me, oh, this is anti-Russian film. <laughs> we don't give you paper. <laughs> mm. You don't have the chance to show it show anywhere. It. At this time, um, I'm I'm finalized uh, produce this film after few months. My grandma has died. I'm has a big depression, and my uh, friends support me, and uh, they put on the Thirteen Symphony by Beethoven for this film, and uh, exclude the some part my monologues and uh, monologues by Putin and after the people from the Minister of Culture oh this is a good film and they put the originally in the archives Minister of Culture uh, so you basically had version uh, with uh, Beethoven so you basically had the same image uh, but different audio uh, yes I, I think yes maybe I didn't remember all because uh, the real I had a big depression, and uh, this film selected one festival uh, inside the Russia, and uh, I'm showed the original film. I have the specter, and I showed the original film. I have uh, some awards for this film inside the Russia, inside uh, in the YouTube. Uh, the, original version this is interesting how the <laughs> how the work uh, censorship they don't want to <laughs> analyze what about the what the film they only control uh, this film introduce the truth of the reality yes in truth they not give it chance this is a big symptom how the work this is regime and I am mm, and uh, more my colleagues who did work inside Russia before 24 February 2022 maybe have a maybe have ideas of hope or oh, we create the new ways uh, to resist the to censorship the, yes and the regime and this is not work uh, if you would make your film uh, Holy God today and you would change the audio, uh -huh. could you still get the paper, you think? No. Uh, they control uh, because the whole uh, festivals uh, uh, now uh, work uh, people from FSB. This is more than KGB. This is FSB. Uh, and yes, uh, yes, yesterday I re read uh, some news in inside the Perm. This is a uh, city in the Siberia. People from Facebook close one school. This is school don't support the propagandistic ideas. And they just... Uh, they don't, uh, yes, uh, started a uh, special lesson about the patriotic ideology. And the whole school now inside the Russian had a special lesson about the patriotism. Yes. And, and this is uh, lesson include the information about the special military operation. And this is uh, only uh, official propagandist position. Uh, yes. Now, no, not reason. After this short break, we are refreshed. 
had some cherries. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, actually, I discovered your work through uh, Go East Film Festival in Germany. I was actually speaking with like the um, director of the festival on my podcast as well. Through the festival, I discovered your short film, uh, No Nation Without Culture, that you showed uh, in the festival, but you produced uh, 2022. Finalized in 2022, yes. Uh, and I saw it in a series of different short films. And this, uh, your work really, I was like, wow, this is great. I have to write to this person. It really, like the visual language really spoke to me since it somehow it was very like, yeah, I would say pop. I don't know, like very to the people, you know, very easy mm -hmm. visual language, which I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And it also kind of was sticking out from the other films. Very simply speaking, you're just showing us Grozny, mm -hmm. uh, the city where you lived uh, as a young person. And through basically a tour mm -hmm. around the city, you speak about the history of Chechnya mm -hmm. and your own history. Tell me, like, what was the idea and why did you actually decide in 2021 to go back there and make a film? I did return to Chechnya uh, in first time in 2015. In this time, I'm uh, see my home inside the Grozny. And this is home uh, did build uh, my uh, grandparents. And I live in this uh, home together, my grandparents and together my mom in the war time. And I had idea about I want to use this house. This is house had the more uh, drums for weapons. And uh, I want to use this house for the theatral stage. For In the, the film. My mm -hmm. uh, story, my experience life inside the Chechenia. And I started to work inside my mind about the idea of the next film. And uh, spring 2021 did come to uh, the Grozny with my theme to produce the film Memory. And this is my feature film, documentary film about the, my experience life in the wartime inside the Chechenia. And uh, we, we didn't have a chance to produce this original scenario inside the Russian in And I created the uh, fake scenario. And this is scenario we introduced the Minister of Culture in Russia and Minister of Culture in, in the Chechenia Republic. Mm, and this is story from the fake scenario about my grandpa, who is the hero uh, Second World War. And he is uh, patriotic. Fighting against the yes, Nazis. And he built this home. And I want to produce the documentary about my grandpa. Uh, and this is the very funny uh, patriotic script. Because I know, yes, I work with the propaganda and I needed research the w way <laughs> how I have a chance to produce my film. And this is a very big joke because the story of my grandpa, very, very sad story. Because my grandpa, who is the build this house inside the Grozny, he did burn in the Hakasia, in the inside the Gulag. Mm. And I create about very, the hero. very uh, strange scenario about my patriotic grandpa. Exactly. And the Russian Minister of Culture very love this script. Yes, and they give me paper. I have a chance to produce film memory. And um, I did come to Chechenia in the spring 2021. Uh, with my team, and I'm seeing more, more portraits in Putin and Ahmad Kadyrov and Kadyrov Jr. in the street and on the inside. buildings. Yes, 
the we can see that of course in the film and yeah basically it's unbelievable i mean like i was like is this photoshopped or is this real so this basically is... every uh state building has the portrait of totalitarian leaders inside my mind i, I didn't believe this is the real what happened what happened because the Chechenian people had a more repression from the Russian imperialism. The Stalin created deportation of all Chechenian people uh, from Chechenia to Kazakhstan for three days. General Chechenian population. Uh, population yes, uh, Russian army put the train and go to Kazakhstan. This is uh, the February. Month. For those who didn't see the film, you're basically presenting to us the city of Grozny from the outside. So we're getting a tour around the city. We see different facades of uh, different buildings and most of them have portraits either of Putin or Ahmad and Ramzan Kadyrov on the facades, which is very, very striking image. And in between those frames, uh, you're uh, giving the viewers some historic information, some important dates uh, that are crucial for uh, the history of uh, the Chechen Republic and the Chechen people. February 24th, 1944, uh, the now official genocide of uh, the Chechen and the English people people, deportations of those communities to Kazakhstan. And then, of course, February 24, 2022, uh, the full-scale invasion and war in Ukraine. Yes, more than imperialism. Yes, sure. Uh, colonialism and imperialism. Um, I think this is a date. It's very important because the Russian had a very big holiday uh, 23rd February. And this is a special day for the man, war man. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the 8th March, this is Women's Day. Yes, yeah. in the war. And inside Russia, a uh, man's, war man's day. 23rd Only of February. Only war man's, not the whole man's, or the war man's. Yes, and propaganda uses dates, very big holiday inside the Russia. And uh, I think the Putin regimes use this date of the strategy. Um, I guess to also write their own history, right? Modern colonialism. To continue this, talk about the story, how, how we start to produce the No Nation Without Culture. First emotion, yes, I don't believe all these portraits of Putin because the Chechen people at the 10 years war of the freedom and liberty and now this introduced me the Chechen people the slams of the Russian imperialism I'm seeing more portrait not only outside and inside and maybe you uh, remember the dance of children uh, inside Seen, that. Yeah, yes yeah. and and they <laughs> dancing together and uh, this place had a portrait. In the background we can see every the portraits. Every class in the school have this portrait. Every, every, every place inside they have these portraits. I understand this is real and I'm now produced the film memory about my child time inside the Chechenia in the first part from this film about the Soviet Union regime before the started war. And I have memories for the portraits of Lenin from the my child time. And I understand, oh, this is the modern uh, regime. Modern I dictators. A, yes, I need to uh, analyze this in the cinema and talk with my... DOP Lisa Popova, now she stay in Kazakhstan. We talk about how we have a chance to analyze this from the for the cinema. And the first time I had a casting for the film memory in the uh, cultural house in city little city Argun in the very big theater hall and the stage I'm sit 
in the stage and behind my, you b- behind me i had a big big portrait with ahmad kadirov and the citat from ahmad kadirov no nation without culture <laughs> and i'm uh, put my phone the opposite for me and start produce the my self portrait for this with the my poster video self portrait Yes. And after I'm talk with my DOP about my idea, we need to produce the parallel film about the reality. So you came this. there to do your film memory about your childhood and memories of war. And while you were there, so contemporary Grozny, you were like, we also have to make another yes. film yes. that shows this reality of contemporary yes. Grozny. This is very important for the context how the so it's almost like a work. pre-film to your film memory yes and i return to my memory because inside my film memory had the uh, soviet union propaganda Story and uh, i had a brainwash in my children's um, school time my first uh, school book portrait of lenin and we start uh, the the wrote text the first three words homeland mother and lenin and now i did see this portrait and i understand this is eternal return eternal. or just a continuation yes and how the regime reproduced the new regime Mm. and how the regime used children. That we see also, of course, in your film, which is like one of the most striking uh, scenes or materials you're using, contemporary material when the full-scale invasion starts uh, in Ukraine. Uh, there is uh, material of children in Chechnya yes. uh, with guns and full-on army equipment uh, ready to fight for motherland Russia, with the Chechen and Russian flags. Can you speak a little bit about that? Uh, I'm see this in the Amsterdam. I'm escaped from Russia. Uh, and uh, You saw it one, in some one, media? Uh, yes, yeah, some media and maybe some my friends uh, did send me this video from the social media. I'm quiet and uh, I don't... I, the this is emotion that's very hard because uh, i didn't believe what see this is the same of uh, hitler gugent absolutely yeah <laughs> and we know what is it hitler gugent mm, this is the Correct. very very big symptom about the totalitarianism absolutely totalitarianism and the modern fascism because yeah, the, one, now one, we understand the chechen people this is the russian slams who is the go for the his caesar putin and give him his life for the uh, war inside the ukraine this is unbelievable because chechen people they have a 20 years old war about the liberty and freedom of their own <laughs> and culture and nation he uh, have this and now we understand what happened for the whole Chechen population this is big tragedy of the Chechen culture because the uh, Russian imperialism absolutely killed Chechen culture and so other ethnic minorities in Russia. Yes, and I understand I need to put this video inside the No Nation Will Set culture because now we have example, very big example about the eternal return of the Russian regime. And this is part introduced the real perspective of this is more than Russian fascism because Russian fascism use different category. What is it Russians? The Russians 
this is not only for the blood, the Germany fascism talk about the blood, about the clear of the nationality race, race. Yeah. and the Russian fascism uh, use the um, only idea of the Russians, not of the nationality, because inside Russia, Burat, Tatar, Chuvash, Bashkir, Chechen, Ingush, Dagestan, more, 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 Yakut. It's a very long list. Strange, I ask myself, how these children, who is the originally Chechen people, and they... Uh, grand uh, uh, parents at the deportation for the, from Russia, and they uh, uncle and the parents uh, killed the Russian Federation, and they say, "I love my homeland, Russia. I go to the holy war for the Russian." This is. Brainwash, right? Uh, yeah. There is strange how this work. Mm. We need to analyze how the work this is uh, Russian modern fascism. Yes, and um, we started with Lisa Popova, shoot this film, No Nation Without Culture. Uh, we shoot this film inside the car. This car had a black window. Uh, we started uh, every morning until five. This is the safe because uh, we stay for the uh, more places inside the Grozny and um, more uh, people from FSB check what what's happening. Why what's are happening? They why this car stay here? And yes, and uh, we understand. We need to organize this process. It's very safe for the team. And we shoot this film every morning, one frame or, or another frame before we start the, sh the shooting process. Memory at uh, nine, <laughs> we shoot. The, the non-nation without culture. Yes, we talk with Lisa Papova about the images, what we want to introduce. And uh, Lisa um, produced special lines. The lines had a, a focus only uh, in the central and the, inside the objective. And mm. the, another... It's uh, kind of visual effect. Yes, uh, place from freight. Mm, had a very uh, little um, unfocus. And this is uh, frames give you strange emotion. This is real or unreal. This unsettling, this. Yes. yeah, this like yeah. something is strange here. Yeah, definitely. I, I really uh, loved the visual effect you added to it. It gave this kind of feeling of mystery and this... Indeed, and uh, mm -hmm. now uh, that you said that you filmed it from the car, mm -hmm. it of course adds to the to the whole process. Uh, last but not least, at the end of the film, we see the credits, as always in films. We see, of course, you. We see your uh, DOP, Lisa Popova. Uh, the rest of the names are hashtags. That means you don't show the names. I assume that's for the safety of the people who make the film, since... They are not in safety yet. Yes. Um, Some people stay inside Russia and they don't have a chance to escape. Some people escape from Russia and have the parents inside Russia. And they don't... This is not safe uh, open his... Uh, to use their surnames. Uh, his names, yes. And they use only the same numbers from al alphabet from his name <laughs> ah, the same number it, of it, letters it, as yes. the names so you kind of know who it is yes mm, yeah i thought that that was very strong and it really added like this extra layer to the material you're showing yes because this is uh, not safe for mm. the people well 
There was so much we spoke about. I think there is so much more we could speak about. I know you're also creating new works. Perhaps one day we can meet again to speak about new, your new works. But people can check out your Instagram and uh, see what you're going to continue on working. Uh, it's a nice sunny day. So I think you want to go to the beach, you told me. <laughs> yes. I want to let you go. Uh, there we also smell some nice things from the kitchen. And last but not least, uh, since it's kitchen conversations, I like to end up by speaking about food and tastes. Also maybe as a nice ending to this very difficult topics we were speaking today about. So... Yeah, what is your favorite food from home? I uh, love uh, cook food with my boyfriend. And this is a good process for the communication. And um, Because he is French, right? Yes, and now he <laughs> cooked uh, the special French cake. Mm, uh, that's the smell. Yes, uh -huh. and uh, after we try. Ooh, we will try. I want that. Uh, yes, and I'm very loved. The pasta. Mm -hmm. I'm very love gluten free pasta okay. because and now uh, we will try this cake, the gluten free me uh, flour uh -huh, uh -huh. because I had allergy for the gluten. Uh, yeah, nice. I, I like that your home food is just like just comfort food and nice stuff that connects to you know your partner and nice moments. Yeah, and fa uh, partner and friends. I, I think this is very good uh, communication for the cooking. Uh, I'm, I'm have more memories from my ch child time. I'm uh, very love cooking with my grandma. What were you cooking, for example, with your grandma? Uh, borscht. Uh -huh. I'm very love cook borscht. Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm very love this, and I'm very love cook uh, draniki. Ah, this is uh, yeah. potato pancakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, um, I'm. This is maybe my uh, favorite food from the post Soviet Union space. Thank you so much, Vedlena, for this uh, conversation on your sofa in your studio. And um, yeah, looking forward to seeing your new uh, work and keeping in touch with you. Uh, thank you. And um, I wish you good luck for your kitchen conversation because this is, I think, very important for the East Europe culture. And uh, I love this concept. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. everyone. And this was it for today. Thank you for reaching till the end of this podcast episode. The next one is coming in four weeks, always on Monday. Please follow the podcast and leave a rating if you're listening on Spotify. There is two ways you can support the further development of this platform. Number one is to buy the Kitchen Conversations cookbook, Homey Recipes from Artists, that features uh, home dishes from the first 17 guests who appeared on the podcast. And number two is to become a patron of Kitchen Conversations and support uh, this platform with an amount of your choice that starts with $2.50 per month. More info you can find on patreon.com slash kitchen conversations. In the meantime, take good care and we hear each other soon.